Okay, so just to slow ourselves down, if we could just um, turn off our mics and then just relax, take a couple of deep breaths, make sure that our spines are nice and straight. And with the in-breath, just breathe in peace and harmony. And with the out-breath, just breathe out any cares of the day. Breathe in relaxation. And let go of any tension, any stress, any thoughts that you don't require. Just allow yourself to be present in the present moment. Nice and relaxed. And we'll just start off by doing our head and neck and breathing exercises. And now the Lord's Prayer, which is a prayer of attunement and protection. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now the affirmation, we'll choose the one from cooperation. Not my will, but thine, O Lord, be done in me 
and through me. Let me ever be a channel of blessings, today, now, to those that I contact in every way. Let my going in, my coming out, be in accord with that thou would have me do. And as the call comes, here am I. Send me, use me. And now the other prayer of protection. As we open our hearts to the unseen forces that surround the throne of grace, beauty and might, we throw about ourselves the protection found in the thought of the Christ. And if we could just enter into the silence of meditation for approximately eight to ten minutes. Father, Mother, God. Christ Jesus. We give thanks for this opportunity of spending the silence in communion with Thee. And we ask that the energy that we have raised may now go out to those who are in need, and especially anyone that has no one else to pray for them, that they may receive whatever it is that they need at this time, if it's in accordance with thy laws and thy will. Thank you, Father. Amen. The first reading uh, is the inner from the Inner Power of Silence, Week 4, Part 2. Understanding Meditation, Chapter 9. How East meets West in meditation tradition. Throughout this book, we have read and analyzed many passages on meditation from the secret of the golden flower and the writings of Lama Govinda. Together with a paper by Roselle, these sources have well represented two of the Eastern spiritual tradition, Chinese Taoism and Tibetan Buddhism. For many years in the United States, meditation was considered by many only as an import from the East and therefore alien and perhaps even sinister in its presence here. Yet side by side with those Eastern writings we have in this book, looked at passages representing the Western traditions, especially those of Christian mysticism, summarized by Underhill and Haler, the scientific approach of Naranjo and Orstein, the psychological foundation laid by Jung, and the intuitive sources recorded through Casey and Stanford, both of Western tradition background. That Western foundation seems much less known or acknowledged by those who would label meditation as primarily an imported Eastern religious practice. Several specific aspects of meditation, for example, the use of mantras or affirmations, the control of breathing, and the specific location of spiritual centers differ among various traditions. However, a closer look would demonstrate that these differences are as great among some Eastern traditions as they are between Eastern and Western approaches. More evident is the strong common foundation in all these traditions for the practice of some form of meditation and beyond that for the philosophy of the nature of humanity and the reasons for our physical existence. This leads to the conclusion that we need not look to the East for either a rationale or a technique for our meditation. In fact, there may be strong reasons for Westerners not to adopt some of the Eastern approaches to meditation. Jung, for example, 
warns against the adaptation by Westerners of Eastern techniques and teachings. 1962, pages 83 to 85. The danger is that in such an adoption, we will throw away our Western heritage and find ourselves with Eastern traditions not suited to the psychic evolution we have experienced. The intellect has been highly developed in Europe and America, but the insights of Chinese philosophy come from the intuitive function. Rather than impose intellect upon these teachings, Jung suggests suggest that Westerners, uh, example, Europeans in the following passage, would do better to develop their own inner nature and thereby surpass the developments of the East. If we would succeed in elevating another or even a third psychic function to the dignity accorded intellect, then the West might expect to surpass the East by a very great margin. Therefore, it is sad indeed when the European departs from his own nature and imitates the East or affects it in any way. The possibilities open to him would be so much greater if he would remain true to himself and develop out of his own nature all that the East has brought forth from its inner being in the course of the centuries. Jung, 1962, pages 85 to 86. One way this can be done is through an exploration of the unconscious. The West has not trusted fantasy, labeling it subjective daydreaming, while the East abounds in images and symbols related to the spiritual quest. They long ago extracted the essence of images arising from the unconscious and condensed it into spiritual teachings. Jung feels strongly that the Westerner must now begin to experience fantasy and find the sense in apparent nonsense, 1962, page 120. This is not an invitation to daydream in meditation. Instead, it would provide us with the opportunity to experience through dreams and reverie a forgotten part of ourselves. Meditation, as it has been described, would act as a selective agent, attuning an individual so that the unconscious content allowed to awaken in fantasy will lead to greater integration and psychic balance. In doing this, the West may reach deeper insights than those of the East. We may rest assured that what we extract from our experiences will differ from what the East offers us today. The East came to its knowledge of inner things in relative ignorance of the external world. We, on the other hand, will investigate the psyche and its depths supported by a tremendously extensive historical and scientific knowledge. Jung, 1962, pages 120 to 121. Heller supports the notion that we in the West need not look to the East to find guidance concerning meditation. He admits that the contemplative tradition has been buried and is unknown to most modern day Christians. The exaggerated dynamism of the concept of God that recognizes only a deus semper, semper actuosus et nunquam otiosus, a God always active and never idle, and the related hostility to the static platonic conception of God have given rise to a highly anti-contemplative attitude. Nevertheless, the contemplative attitude is not entirely lacking, but has merely been submerged. It cannot die as long as the Old and New Testaments continue to be generally accepted. Heller, 1960, page 201. He goes on to say that Christian mysticism overshadows non-Christian mysticism by its scope its richness, and its diversity. He agrees that the study of non-Christian forms of meditation can provide valuable stimulus and suggestions, yet asserts that those sources hold nothing entirely new for one who has thoroughly studied 
Western mysticism. He sees the modern day attraction to Eastern philosophy as a reaction to the unavailability of parallel knowledge from the Western tradition. In his study of that tradition, Haler names Plato and Plotinus as the great teachers of Christian mystics. Philo took the first decisive step in his treatise on the contemplative life to synthesize the prophetic tradition of the Old Testament with elements of mysticism. This fusion of biblical prophetic piety and of Platonic Neoplatonic mysticism is the most grandiose synthesis of diverse religious forms known to the history of religion, greater even than the memorable synthesis of old Islamic religion and Gnostic Neoplatonic Indian mysticism that occurred in Sufism. Haler, 1960, page 194. After this, Haler credits Clement and Origen with a synthesis of biblical Christianity and Platonism. And finally, Neoplatonism influenced Christianity through Dionysus, the Areopagite, a mysterious figure criticized by many modern Protestants. Haler describes the work of the Areopagite in this way. For him, God is the inaccessible light that can be seen only in non-seeing, that transcends all sensory perception and intellection. In this non-seeing, imageless vision lies for him the secret of the mystical contemplation. Heller, 1960, page 196. All this supports the preposition that the practice of meditation and its inner power of silence, such as has been presented in this book, is relevant to our culture, especially in a universal form as described. Not only is it a part of our heritage, no matter how forgotten, but the West may have the opportunity to experience insights into human nature even deeper than those from the East. Regardless of the sources used to define this integrated universal approach, coming as they do from many cultures and historical periods. They all point to meditation as an essential and powerful activity in our unending search for fulfillment and self-realization. That ends the uh, first reading from the Inner Power of Silence, week four, part two, understanding meditation, chapter nine, how East meets West in meditation tradition. Yes, thank you, Lolita. That's there's a lot in that. Yeah. <laughs> there was a lot in that one again. It's very academic. This one uh, mm. got all the various traditions mm. and uh, what they they are saying. Yeah, mm. it's very interesting to me personally, coming from the east and migrating to Australia, which follows the Western tradition. It's a uh, it's sort of in the beginning coming from a Christian background as well. Catholics, um, meditation to me was very foreign because uh, meditation, uh, while I was brought up in the Catholic Church, was of the devil. No, nobody meditates in the Catholic Church. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think that's what this whole chapter is trying to address, basically to say that um, um, it is a universal tradition and it's, uh, you know, it, it should be part of the West, but it isn't because it's just been forgotten. That old uh, meditation tradition has been lost over centuries. Mm. And it makes sense, doesn't it, that you ca you cannot impose on a different culture what is of the East. To me, it's like, you know, if I was brought up eating rice and you try to take away the rice from me, yeah. that's what it's like for me to sort of meditate in just in a certain way. I, I, I think I love it. Um, uh, because uh, as an omnis, I love marrying the East and the Western. It's it's like gaining a lot, you know, having a complete picture. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, this, I mean, this was actually written quite a long time ago. So again, it's, it reflects an outdated approach, really. 
you know, the 1970s book. Mm. But That's it's worth good. exploring. But mm. you just have to keep on using old methods. Uh, um, it's interesting that he did note right. that, that um, the Eastern people were, um, oh, sorry, Western people in the US, etc., were very attracted, especially young people, attracted to meditation mm. and those sorts of practices because they just soaked it up like a sponge. They um, they weren't aware that there was a, a Western tradition. Mm. Um, so when the East came to the US and um, people started to teach meditation, they just approached that. They wanted it. They mm. just needed it. They knew that it was going to be so helpful for them. Mm. Yeah, that uh, you know those Oregon and all those names. Uh, I kept away from all of that because I just couldn't understand it. Um, what was the names I mentioned again? Um, They're unpronounceable mainly. Uh, <laughs> Plotinus, I think, is one of them, and Oregon. Yeah, all them. Mm. I think they're Greeks or Romans or Greeks. Yeah, yeah. I never, I never kept away from all of them. Mm. Another thing that I have observed with meditation these days is that it's like, you know, how the babies, we feed them uh, pureed food and then they become, they go into solids and into meat. I find that the, uh, the my observation of the uh, different kinds of meditation that is being used now is they, they, they um, uh, fashion it in such a way what the person can take. So it could be a, uh, a two-minute meditation, one-hour sitting meditation. It could be a walking meditation. And, and I think it is good when everything is so organic to suit today's society. Mm. Absolutely. People can do whatever meditation they want to, freely, whatever seems good for them. Mm. Okay, so <clears throat> continuing the inner power of silence. Uh, this is uh, the appendix, <clears throat> what science says about meditation. The years since 1970 have seen a major growth in the number of scientific research studies focusing on meditation. As the practice of meditation has become more widespread in the West, so has the West's interest in objectively validating the subjective effects reported by meditators. Meditation research studies can be divided into several areas, the physiology of meditation, techniques of meditation, psychological effects, parapsychological effects, behavioural effects, group and social effects and general effects. This chapter is not a definitive survey of such research, but illustrates each of these research areas with examples of interesting studies and results. To represent the complete range of research included are examples of studies without supporting results. Research on the physiology of meditation. One of the classical studies in this area was done by Wallace and Benson with subjects practicing transcendental meditation. They described this state as a wakeful hypometabolic state with the following characteristics. There is a reduction in oxygen consumption, carbon dioxide elimination, and the rate and volume of respiration. A slight increase in the acidity of the arterial blood a marked decrease in the blood lactate level, a slowing of the heartbeat, a considerable increase in skin resistance, and an electroencephalogram pattern of intensification of slow alpha waves with occasional theta wave activity from Wallace and Benson, 1973. Of particular interest is the decrease in the lactate concentration in the blood and indication of metabolism in the absence of free oxygen. They found that during the first 10 minutes of meditation, the concentration decreased nearly four times faster 
than the rate of decrease in people normally resting in the supine position. They quote previous studies that have shown that patients with anxiety and neurosis show a large rise in blood lactate when they are placed under stress. Benson has continued not only to undertake research on the meditation process and specifically on the non-cultic technique he refers to as the relaxation response, but also to publish books which have contributed to a popular surge of interest in this process. Example, Benson, 1975. In one of his most interesting studies, Benson and associates found that Tibetan Buddhist advanced meditators investigated with the help of the Dalai Lama were able to increase the temperature of their fingers and toes by as much as 8.3 degrees centigrade from Benson 1982. Wallace and his associates published a study reporting that long-term meditators exhibited physiological and perceptual capacities of people 12 years younger than their actual chronological age from Wallace et al. 1982. The specific differences were in auditory thresholds, close-up vision and blood pressure. Studying both short and long-range effects of meditation on the neuromuscular system, Warshall 1980 suggests that meditation may result in shorter reflex times, possibly because of a heightened sensitivity of the human nervous system. One result emerging from the Benson research, as well as from other studies, is that the same physiological responses to meditation as measured in terms of such common indicators as galvanic skin response, blood pressure, respiratory rate, pulse rate, or electroencephalogram EEG, are not unique to meditation, but may occur with other simpler relaxation techniques, including just sitting. Shapiro in 1982 has pr provided probably the most comprehensive summary and comparison to date of the physiological effects of meditation and other self-control strategies. His overview includes 83 references on meditation and he cites four previous major reviews of the meditation literature. However, no research has been identified where the physiological activity at the endocrine centres during meditation has been studied. Research on the pineal gland by Dr Richard Wood Bertman and his associations at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, for example, suggest still undeciphered functions for this gland, Descartes called the seat of the rational soul. As presented in Chapter 8, the activity at the spiritual centres is the critical connection between the infinite and the finite, and everything else physiologically pales by comparison. But as yet, traditional science has not produced research support for this philosophy. Research on techniques of meditation. In research on a home study approach to learning and practicing meditation, Per Year, Case and Thurston, 1976, found a significant reduction in anxiety as measured by a psychological scale among those using a new workbook manual over, over those using their customary meditation techniques. The approach in the manual had many of the features incorporated into the steps outlined in Chapter 3 of this book. The need for a special mantra during meditation has been explored by many researchers and Delmont, 1983, reviews many of the, those studies to conclude that, like Benson's, any mental device on which one can focus attention is as effective as any other in bringing about the physiological changes associated with meditation, see the section above. Therefore, we can conclude that the choice of a focusing device is up to the meditator. Chapter 3 recommends focusing on an affirmation related to the ideal because of its value in reaching toward the desired pattern of Christ consciousness something beyond just the beneficial physical effects. The value of the head and neck exercise in prefer preparing for meditation 
as recommended in Chapter 3, has been indirectly confirmed by the research of Dr. Donald Peterson of the Loma Linda University School of Medicine. Peterson's research emphasizes specifically the value of these exercises in the relief of chronic headaches. In support of the need to be patient in the early stages of meditation practice, Compton and Becker demonstrated that a learning period of about one year is normal in Zen meditation and that expectations for positive effects early in that period are unrealistic, accounting for some of the non-results of studies with novice meditators. Research on psychological effects of meditation. Setting aside whether chronic pain is physiological or psychological, Kabat-Zinn demonstrated in a two-year study that sufferers of chronic pain for whom medical treatments had failed could learn to control pain through a meditation process, 1982. Similarly, Charles Worth, 1984, taught groups of workers to monitor their blood pressure and through techniques including progressive relaxation, deep breathing, imagery work, and autogenic methods, he helped them reduce their blood pressure levels significantly. And another study of workers in a telephone company, Carrington et al. 1980, demonstrated significant stress reduction as a result of worker training and practice of a meditation relaxation technique. Of three techniques compared, the two that involved meditation had greater effects than the one that was primarily progressive relaxation. In an extensive review of meditation research, West reports several studies with positive psychological effects from meditative practice, West 1980. For example, a decrease in anxiety associated with meditation may also be accompanied by a decrease in neurotic tendencies. His summary also reinforces results mentioned above. In seven studies, for example, meditation was an effective means for controlling blood pressure and insomnia and headaches have been successfully treated with meditation. At Harvard Medical School, Brown, 1983, and his associates have reported that long-term meditators may undergo major changes in their perceptual cognitive states. They appear to have more refined mental control, greater discriminative capacities, and less emotional involvement with their thoughts. In a New Zealand study, Thrall, 1981, also demonstrated significant changes on personality measures in favourable directions by meditators, somewhat greater than those practising progressive relaxation. Research on parapsychological effects of meditation. At least two studies point to an increase in psychic sensitivity by those who meditate. Schmeidler, 1970, used six graduate students who called a set of cards at the beginning of the experimental session, underwent a brief session of breathing and meditation instruction by an Indian Swami, then called another set of cards. Five of the six subjects had a significantly higher calling score after the meditation instruction. OSIS 1971 reports a study designed to determine the dimensions of the meditation experience. Subjects' responses to questionnaire items immediately after each meditation period were factor analysed. ESP tests were also given after meditation periods. OSIS found that the factors of self-transcendence and openness were associated with positive ESP results. In a study at the University of Ottawa, psychologist Busby and DeConnick, 1980, measured not only the personality changes resulting from meditation and relaxation exercises, but also recorded the effects those changes had on the meditator's dreams. Results showed a significant increase in fantasy elements, 
and in instances of misfortune transformed into good fortune and a decrease in aggressive dream mood. In another study of meditators dreaming, Faber, 1979, found that meditators recalled significantly more dreams than non-meditators and that the dreams of meditators had more universal or archetypal content than those of non-meditators. Specifically, the meditators' dreams were higher in mythological parallel, emotion, remoteness from everyday life and irrationality, all signs of archetypality, according to Carl Jung. Research on behavioural effects of meditation. In this category are studies of the external behaviour of people who meditate. For example, Fibert and Mead, 1981, looked for effects on academic performance of students who meditated. Their results indicate that students who meditated just prior to studying or taking exams achieved significantly higher grades than those who meditated at other times. Furthermore, all meditators spent less time studying without a drop in academic performance. In a study of creative group problem solving, Kindler in 1979 found that a group which meditated just before working on a problem took less time solving the problem, required fewer transactions between among group members, felt calmer during the activity and reported a greater sense of teamwork than a group which did not meditate. In another study of creativity, Travis, in 1980, found that meditators may increase their creativity in visual arts, but not their verbal creativity. Wong and Associates report that consistent meditation practice among a group of people dependent on drugs or alcohol was accompanied by a decrease of substance abuse as long as they continued meditating. On various measures, the meditators also appeared less paranoid, less psychically debilitated, more satisfied and self-aware, and better able to achieve muscle relaxation. Finally, research by the Arons showed that of the women they studied, those who continued regular meditation for at least two years also had a higher level of marital adjustment than less regular and less experienced meditators. These researchers emphasise that this evidence of correlation does not necessarily indicate a cause and effect relationship between meditation and adjustment, but simply that they appeared together. This same reasoning is true of other studies where the results are based on correlation techniques rather than on more experimental treatments. Research on group and social effects of meditation. In addition to research on the effects of meditation on the consciousness of the individual meditator, some studies have attempted to assess the effects of meditation on mass consciousness, on society, as it were. The Arons, for example, conducted an experiment in Atlanta, Georgia, involving a group of meditators who meditated for an hour each night for six nights in a high crime neighborhood. During this week and the week immediately following, the incidence of violent crime fell dramatically in that district. The experiment was then repeated on two other occasions with similar results, a drop from 18 to 30% in violent crime. Comparable results have also been noted in an area surrounding a university with an estimated 1,600 daily meditators from the Daily Tribune 1982. Research on the general effects of meditation. Since meditation and many other relaxation techniques appear to have so many positive effects on the individual, some research has been directed at seeing how far its effects would spread. For example, Hewitt and Miller tried to find out if meditators would generally enjoy other people more than non-meditators, but the results were not significant. Several researchers have challenged the uniqueness of meditation, pointing to the many studies in which simple rest and relaxation techniques 
achieve many of the same results attributed to meditation. The most extensive scholarly analysis is that of Holmes 1984, with subsequent comments and counter comments by Sula, West, Shapiro, Benson, Friedman and Holmes 1985. The strongest criticisms levelled at meditation in the most detracting of the studies seems to be that with the objective measurements made thus far, meditation has effects which may be little different from the effects of resting. As noted earlier, research has apparently not been done on the physiology of the endocrine system, the spiritual centres during meditation, so science cannot comment yet on that critical phase of the meditation process. Similarly, science has not examined other spiritual aspects of meditation and may not be, be able to with its current repertoire of measurement techniques. However, research on meditation as a vehicle for enhancing one's spiritual development continues at the Association for Research and Enlightenment as part of its ongoing commitment to research. Example, per year, Case in Thurston, 1976, Core 1976 and Sparrow 1981. Until such a time as more spiritually oriented research results are available, it remains for each individual to carry out a personal program of experimentation and self evaluation on the more subtle spiritual benefits of meditation. In the meantime, the consistently positive kinds of results summarized in this chapter and in the many other studies that could not be included here, should be encouraging to the meditator, reason enough to seek the inner power of silence. And that concludes the appendix, and that concludes the book, The Inner Power of Silence. Mm. Mm, thank you, Liz. Yes, Good. thank you, Liz. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Oh, so that was it. Oh, Eva is here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, well, I, I just I was out of time I don't I forgot I didn't forget it but uh you know the time changes oh my god it's not we haven't had it here yes but next week we will have it next weekend so and ah sorry I missed I missed the the meditation so hmm that's you what I always, like most. You can always watch it online. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. I know. That was interesting, isn't it? That when when people meditate in an area that the crime rate goes uh, down. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Now that that could be that there could be another correlation there. Maybe they're all the criminals, and while they're <laughs> meditating, they're not committing crime. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, <drunk> kid. <laughs> but you know, you know, I I participate in the uh, the Australian and the world prayer. One at uh, eight o'clock in the morning, and one at two o'clock in the afternoon. So I know that there's a lot of people, you know, meditating for world peace. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one at eleven a.m. as well, isn't there? What's the 11 a.m. one, Liz? I think that there was one uh, that was a, a meditation group that was at 11 a.m. Mm. We've, got, a, we've got our own at 8 a.m. Yeah. Hmm. 8 a.m., yep. Yeah, that was very, yeah. very so, academic, think... you know. Mm. That's why I don't... <laughs> It's, uh, you know, there's an increase or there's a decrease and then there's other groups that say uh, there was no effects or so okay. researchers, you know, can prove a lot of things and unprove a lot of things. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the main thing is we just do our personal experience and carry on. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's I don't know. But I, I, I assume that there is more... Um, scientific um experiments mm -hmm. have been done since this book was written so it's yeah. it's uh, yeah. yeah i think it's a, a sort of an institute at an university in in 
in America somewhere uh, that's still doing the the researches on this subject. So it's mm. and, you, pr uh, mm. Mm. you probably come across the uh, thing that they did among the yogis in the Himalayas. I think it was where mm. they yeah, actually yeah. can see that you know it slows down. Mm. It, it slows yeah, down yeah, their yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, and some months ago I can't remember when they had a, a TV program here in Sweden and it was I don't know how to use, how you say it in, in, in English but meditation into death in the de into death yeah and there were scientists uh, um, doing research on dying uh, Buddhist monks mm -hmm. and they were allowed to do that because they can get into it as, as I found out and they call it something special um, uh, that state when they are meditating and then they are leaving this earth into the next world so it's it's called something special and I, I can't remember the name but they had the um, uh, um, improvement, I think you can call it, uh, from the Dalai Lama to do this uh, before doing this research. And they had a lot of instruments and so on. And that was really, really interesting. But they can be in that state for, the monks could be in that state for maybe a week or two weeks. And then they saw the, the natural um, way of the body was, uh, you know, um, getting down. So it's it was really really interesting to see that when mm -hmm. they were died when they di died they they looked like they were in this world as as we are now, and that's. But they were long term meditators. If you are in the eighties and then monk a Buddhist monk, you know how to meditate. So. Yeah. But that was really, really interesting to to have a look at. I don't know if it's available anymore, but um, mm. 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 that will be an interesting technique to learn when you want to exit. Uh huh. When it's yeah. time for you to yeah. exit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Isn't mm. the biblical way of exiting called going to sleep, Keith? Going to sleep is the word that they use in the Bible. Well, for death. For, yeah, for ex yeah, for dying. Yeah. Well, yeah. Lazarus was raised from the dead after four days. And according mm -hmm. to Casey readings, he was telling his experience while he was dead. Mm -hmm. He was, he was uh, you know, telling them what he experienced. Mm -hmm. uh, 2,000 years ago, people understood what death was like or from Lazarus. Mm -hmm. He came mm -hmm. back and told them mm -hmm. what happened to him mm -hmm. while he was mm -hmm. dead. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that similar to the NDE's experiences? You know, the near-death experiences yeah. of... Yeah? Well, yeah. Well, there's a lot of books of about near-death mm -hmm. experiences. I, I'll be more interested in what Eva was uh, talking about, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll check up if I can find it. Mm, it'll be interesting. Uh, but uh, this book was written, what, 1981? Mm-hmm. No. Uh, 40 years ago, so uh, there's a lot of books now. It must be later than that because he's yep. quoting things from 1986. And, oh, maybe later. Uh, it must be the late 80s, I think. Okay. Yeah. 30 years, 30 something years ago, because there's a lot of books now on the Kundalini experience and mm -hmm. and the spiritual centers and a lot of books on Amazon. So mm -hmm. we've progressed a lot from that. Yeah. Be good to see some more scientific research. He's sort of mm -hmm. trying to uh, yeah, have one sort of done in a more scientific manner. I mm -hmm. think he was emphasizing. So it'd be great to, to read some of that. Mm. Well, it's um, out there. very easy mm -hmm. to find on the internet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that kind of Ooh. that kind of state, what I was talking about, it's called tukdam. 
took them. Took them. Yes. Mm. I, I might uh, Google it and see if I can yeah, find anything. Absolutely. Yeah. Is that the uh, UK D A M? Yes. Okay. Thank you. The mm. mm. UK D A M. And uh, mm. I suppose I can I can look at it on my on my screen here um, still. So it's it's available for us to look at. Mm. Oh. Well, um, you want some? Sounds screen. like sounds like the natural euthanasia. Could be your idea. Do not go oh, gently oh. into that night. <laughs> Give us your your yours. Yeah. Oh, um, Lazarus. <laughs> Lazarus must have been the first experiencer of an NDE. Yes, yes. Uh, probably. Interesting. Probably. Interesting point. Probably uh, 10,000 years oh, ago yeah. in Egypt, they were doing things like this. They were traveling. They would. You like astral travel? Yeah. Like, like, yeah. And then they understood all the what was happening in the solar system. And a tourist and all that. And so they probably had a better understanding of the whole solar system and our purpose as souls. And, and and then they created the animal body that we have now. And that's where our souls are at the moment. And our body is meant to be the temple of God or something, um, you know, more like a, it's, we can use it as an instrument for the soul to to experiment and mm -hmm. but we use it for other things as well so. mm -hmm. <laughs> but we get distracted yeah we we got our own <laughs> yeah. we get very laid from the uh, yeah because I think real purpose. maybe if there was a temple somewhere in the world where we can all go and experience stuff you know but that you have to Mm -hmm. You have to right. worship your own temple oh, yeah. to 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 do it. Uh, that's oh yeah, that's a that's a journey. That's a journey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mm. Yeah, so that's the end of that book. So uh, one. we probably I don't know if we finished the meditation series. Almost we've done. Uh, was that? The four, the sixth book, I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So meditation. So that's the end of uh, meditation. Mm -hmm. Now, in in two, in two weeks, we were going to just go over our presentations for the conference, were we, on the yeah, Sunday? I think, yeah, I think that's mm -hmm. a great idea to do that one. I think yeah. what mm -hmm. would definitely be two weeks' time on the Sunday, November the, I think it's the first or so. Yeah. Will Will you be Will you be recording that? Because I'm sorry to tell you, I'm flying out to the Philippines to open a family restaurant. <laughs> so I'll be away for 10 days. And I think our next meeting will coincide when I'm overseas. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, if it's you. It's actually it, a practice run, it's actually a practice for the conference. So you'll see them at the conference. Okay, okay. So I don't, I don't think we wouldn't be publishing these ones. Yeah. Okay. Is that right? Yeah, we don't okay. want to share our secrets. <laughs> all, all will be revealed. Even among friends. <laughs> all will be revealed at the conference. Yeah. Uh, okay. Because if we do, then everybody will cancel and say, oh, I've seen it already. Don't have to worry about it. Yeah, I'll be time for the conference. I think I'm flying back on the 8th. Mm. And they, so I still have a few days rest before we fly to Melbourne. Oh, wow. Good luck with that. Mm. Yeah. Busy, busy. Too busy. Yeah. yeah. Life is hectic. Not if I watch the bear. Have you seen the bear on Apple? <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> it's so crazy about a restaurant opening up and all the stress and strife of it. Oh. <laughs> I actually. I actually was going to say, I, I made this uh, conference to my 
cousin and she said, oh, I'm publishing something on Facebook or on the internet somewhere so that we can share in whatever we do at the conference. And my sister said the same thing. So people would like to see something coming out of the conference. So I wonder, will we have anything? We have um, maybe a video recording um, of some of the speakers. I, well, I think Keith was going to record some of it if he could. Yeah, I can. Um, my phone can do a very good recording of presentations because um, when I do my TAFE courses, I record the lecturers, and it, it can they can it can go on for hours. Great. So, yeah, so I can record all the. If you want me to record yeah. all them and edit it, yeah. Yep. We have to tell people that they yeah get their permission to publish anything yeah. like that make it available so we have to ask those group ones especially yeah uh, make clear it with those individuals um that they would be happy with that mm. good good that's mm, great good if we could publish it on face facebook or or on youtube somewhere yeah. on my video youtube channel if everybody yeah. agrees yeah and that's a casey dedicated channel really isn't it yeah yeah because it will be good even for the people who are attending physically to be able to re review it and you know like what we get from the uh, one in the US mm. yeah mm. that's right now that's good yep. well, even yep. next, right. next uh, time you have to watch out it's 8 20 now so whatever mm -hmm. that's here, oh yeah uh, time here. yeah <laughs> It's an hour, um, hour forward. Our, our time went forward one hour. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, I look up at them. I, I have to look upon it before I start. So, uh, but just one hour. I think I think it will be nine o'clock, nine or ten o'clock next next year uh, next week. So ne uh, next time, not next week, but next ne next time. Because yeah. uh, the because you're gonna go back one hour again. Yeah. Oh, so no, yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> one, uh, one hour back. Yeah, it's yeah. always confusing. <laughs> I never done that. Well, you, never. It's not. We went forward one, and you went back one. So yeah, next week, yeah. we'll... <laughs> the yeah, same time. It, okay, that's now but two I have... hours different to what it used yeah, to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I have done something on my telephone. Uh, I found out the international time. Uh, here on on every, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, yeah. so it's yeah. Uh, so, uh, mm. yeah. so but it's I missed it. I absolutely um, missed it. Seven p.m. Sydney time. Yeah. Yeah, or Melbourne time. Yeah, Sydney Eastern. or Melbourne or Brisbane. Mm. At Eastern, mm. in Eastern daylight saving time. A E D T. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh well. All, all you need to do is just put um, what time is 7 p.m. Sydney time yeah. in Sweden, and it'll show you. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, we had our it's conference fun. last week here in Sweden. Oh, how did that go? Oh, fine. It was absolutely fantastic. This was the first time we met in many years. Uh and we were about 20 attendants in total. So it, then it wasn't that many people, but it was very, very, very high energy. It's, it's, it was almost, it was amazing. Um, mm -hmm. We had Sean, John Chateau John from Chateau. Canada. Yeah. Yeah. And he talked about um, uh, many things, but he had a, um, he showed a video, or contact video directly, as we do now, with one of the attend. Um, uh, uh, when she was a little girl, she had a reading from Edgar Casey, so that was pretty uh, amazing. But um, mm. Mm. and then we had um, uh, Santos Kaler from Great Britain, and she was ah, uh, she was amazing. It's it's so difficult because she talked about um, Edgar Casey versus the uh, scientific uh, new scientific researches 
Uh, so she combined those um, knowledges, and that was amazing. Uh, she did it on the the uh, well. It's it's so difficult for me to describe, but but um, it was. Mm -hmm. I think everybody was was having a good time, and and it takes time to when you come back to your normal routines. It's <laughs> oh no, it's. <laughs> I don't know where you are. I don't know where I've been this week. <laughs> yeah. Well, how many good. days was it? How, yeah. How, how many days was it? Was it a two day weekend or two two days? Yes, two days. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, I you? even dreamt. I even dreamt in English. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm thinking of English, and and I even and I went to my healthcare center on Monday, and I nearly sp was spoken in English to them, but I didn't have to do that. So <laughs> wow. it's it's, yeah, it's, it's hard to, to come, come back. back down. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. When you've been on such a high for a whole week. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good. Fantastic. So I hope you will have a fantastic conference, you too, in Australia. I'm sure we will. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. We're hopeful mm -hmm. of getting at least 20, if not um, mm -hmm. up closer mm -hmm. to 25 or more. But um, mm -hmm. we'll just see who registers at the last minute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that will all of be. <gasps> mm -hmm. I, I think the challenge... The challenge we have in Australia is such a big country that you know, mm -hmm. if, if to get people from flying from all over the place, it can be costly mm -hmm. rather than just a small mm -hmm. country where you can easily go to one point, one the venue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. to come mm -hmm. from Perth to yep. Melbourne and then up to here mm -hmm. for um, mm -hmm. a weekend is very a very expensive exercise with absolutely the and accommodation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. A lot easier for people to drive down from Melbourne or something. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because you think we, we'll mm. we'll get a lot of people interested in metaphysical stuff like, like Edgar Casey in Australia. If they can get twenty people in Sweden, you know. Well mm. yeah. that would be nice, but um I just don't know. And, you know, I've spoken to quite a few people and um, those who are interested in this sort of thing say mm -hmm. they know all of this, they don't need to come to this conference. Mm -hmm. um, but how do you reach those who would like to know? And the other mm -hmm. one that's going to be interesting is trying to balance between those that have been exposed to the Casey material for decades are coming mm -hmm. to the conference but those who mm. have barely heard of Edgar Casey are also mm. going to the conference mm. to try and get the balance um, to those two different lots of people. Mm. 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 My, my friend comes under that category because his ex-wife is very much into metaphysics and that's how he heard about Casey. So when I actually mentioned it to him, he was interested in coming for that reason because he, he had an introduction from his ex-wife. Is, yeah. Does he live in Philippines or he lives in Australia? No, no he's in Australia and he lives in Canberra. Okay. He's my travel buddy. Okay. Yeah, he's a retired 75-year-old, but very, very uh, strong 75-year-old. He, nice. he walks, yeah, walks every morning, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's over in the Philippines at the moment, uh, uh, enrolled in doing French, of all places, doing doing. French, French with a Filipino <laughs> accent. <laughs> yeah, I think I think his his mentor, his tutor is actually half Filipino, half half uh, French, and he actually grew up in Paris, oh, okay. and and that's why he's doing it there. Mm. Yeah, uh, I'll be seeing him because he'll still be there when I uh, fly on the twenty eighth to open the uh, restaurant on the thirtieth. We're opening the restaurant on my sister's uh, uh, birthday. It was oh. her dream when she was alive because she was a restaurateur and her dream was to open a restaurant in my hometown with her name. Mm -hmm. So we're calling it Patio Orieta. Her name is Orieta. So mm -hmm. that's what we're doing. Uh. I'll, 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 I'll share some photos with you. <laughs> 
guys. Okay. <laughs> Kit and I are friends on Facebook, so Kit can see all my uh, posts. Yeah. And her birthday is on the 30th, did you say? Yep. Yep. I think she's a Scorpio. Oh, absolutely, because my wife's birthday was the 30th. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, dear. Oh, right. Yeah. So I'll be thinking of your wife on our opening of the restaurant. <laughs> uh, the other interesting thing is I, I just had my birthday a few days ago. Um, oh, yeah. First. Last, uh, yeah. When was it? Last Thursday. Yeah. Last Thursday, and my daughter-in-law, um, married to my youngest son, um, who she's from Vietnam. Her father's birthday is also the seventeenth of October, the same as mine. <laughs> what a coincidence is that! It is. It is. What yeah. birth sign is the seventeenth, uh, Russell? Sorry. What birth sign is the seventeenth? Libra. 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 But I have Scorpio Ascendant okay, or Scorpio Rising, which um, is why my best friend at high school was a Scorpio. My best friend at university was a Scorpio and I married a Scorpio. <laughs> I get on well with Scorpios because That's I've got Scorpio Ascendant. What, what year is that? I can look up your astrology. That would be interesting. Um, what year was I born? Yeah. 1951. Yep. Very good. Mm. Liz, can you look up mine? August 26, 1955. <laughs> yeah. what, what, is, what, uh, August, what date was that? 26. Mm. Uh, 1955. Yep, I am. Difficult Virgo. Well, look, if you want anything done, give it to a Virgo to do and I'll do it for you. <laughs> I'm I'm a reform I'm a reformed uh, perfectionist, Russell. <laughs> <laughs> you speak oh, look, once a Virgo, always a Virgo. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I, I have a Virgo daughter. Have you? Mm. Uh, is is she uh, very loyal to the family and uh, very yes. outspoken? No, she's not outspoken. I no. am. But um, no, she's um, just about everything in her chart is either Virgo or Sagittarius. There's not much else other than Virgo and Sagittarius. She's got all her planets grouped in two areas. I still don't understand a lot of the ascendant and descendants and things like that. All I know is that I'm a Virgo. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So I I have to I have to educate myself more <laughs> about uh, astrology. I'm I'm interested. Hmm. Well, every time Edgar Casey gave a um a life reading, he would go through um the planetary alignments for people to explain what their um tendencies were in this lifetime. But occasionally he would say that um. Um, the person he was giving the reading for was not a typical, um, their astrology did not reflect who they really were. So they had obviously moved yeah. past that astrological blueprint and were doing things more from their own free will rather than oh, from the planet. Wow. Of the planet to mm -hmm. the I think if just very recently uh, I posted something on Edgar Casey group about uh, the different planets that people sort of like. Didn't you? Quick, I I was I was reading that and I was really quite interested on it. Me? Oh, no, because uh, what Edgar Casey says is that as a soul, you go and visit different planets in the solar system mm -hmm. and you develop uh, strengths in those different planets and different qualities. Planets. Yeah. yeah. Soul qualities. So, for example, mm. Venus, you develop beauty, love, and yeah, things like that. Relationships. Mm. That was whereas, interesting. Whereas Mercury, you develop intelligence. 
So that's why all the super intelligent people are from Mercury. Mm. We've all probably been there, but probably the recent ones. Have. Mm. So, yeah, that uh, Mars is more like the warlike uh, souls, you know, that go into battle and fight and they like war. Uh, yeah, on, the, on the subject, yeah, sorry, go yeah. on. So yeah, so that's all the different uh, the 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 the, um, the other one. Uranus is the more like psychic people. The other, the, psychic. Yeah, Uranus. They were the Atlanteans. So I don't know how they must have affected Earth. That time. Mm. the extremists. They do everything. One you know, one or the other, one extreme or the other. So on the subject of astrology, um, am I correct into thinking that those 12 houses, we all each go onto a different house in the process of our cycle? Mm. No matter how many lifetimes it takes, do we actually have to go to each house? So if I'm a Virgo in this lifetime, could I be a Libra in another lifetime and, so, and a Capricorn and so on and so forth? Well, as an example, my father um, was a Sagittarian and he's now reincarnated as my son, um, who's also a Sagittarian. The same. And quite often I noticed that um, people in the Casey readings who were reincarnated of someone that they knew what their star sign had been the previous lifetime came back as the same star sign. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Hmm. So, so my my theory that we actually go from different houses in the course of many lifetimes may not be right. Well, houses is different to planets. Mm -hmm. um, all the houses are showing is the area of your life that you will apply what you've learned when you visited the planets in between your Earth lives. Mm -hmm. Um. So it's just um, basically um, showing you what area you're going to apply that in. Right, right, right. Because each of the 12 houses has a particular application for what you've learned. So it's like a choosing which university I'm going to. It's like going to which university in this lifetime I'm going to to specialize in medicine or the next lifetime will be to specialize in uh, psychology or whatever. Well, say, for instance, if you've got um, Venus in the sixth house, mm -hmm. it means that your attitudes towards um, love and companionship and aesthetics and beauty and things like that will be more in regard to your work where you work, your work environment, um, because the sixth house is all about your work. Um, so whereas if you had Venus in the seventh house, it would be more focused around your relationships. Well, it's, uh, it's like getting a PhD on astrology. <laughs> it's, not, it's not as simple as I thought. Maybe that's why uh, I have delayed. I have delayed learning about astrology all my life. But as the readings say, you know, it's just a pattern that you can either use or your will is stronger. And mm -hmm. um, if you don't mm -hmm. find that the patterns that you've brought with you, the astrological patterns, really suit what you want to do as a soul, you can discard that and do something different. A matter of choice, a matter of yeah. using your free will. Yep. Mm -hmm. Or just fall into old patterns of behavior. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm, interesting. Thank you. Yeah, that was one of our, our lists. Uh, we we're talking about having that project done to analyze all the astrological readings from Edgar Casey and and just study it and then well that's that book by rye red that's, yeah, the, um, that's towards a new astrology that's that's a um 
that would be a very interesting study. Mm. We might end up doing that one later. Mm. <laughs> please, please. I, I am pleading. <laughs> You'd like that? I, I would like to do that one. I'd love to. I'd love to. Any new knowledge mm. for me? Mm. I'm, I'm thirsty for it. Is but uh, but yes. from now until uh, our conference, we'll try and focus more on the healing, healing, mm. healing mm. topic. So I have a lot Which of healing. Which I have a lot of I have a lot of Edgar Casey healing books that I want to show, but maybe I'll wait till I show it during my presentation. But I can. Yeah. And there's some good ones in there too. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. There certainly have been some amazing ones. Mm. Well, it sounds like a smorgasbord, guys. <laughs> it's actually mm -hmm. only four weeks to the conference. Yeah. Less, so... less than four weeks. Yeah. So what if we go for the third as our practice, and which is Sunday the third, we'll do the practice for the, the conference, yeah. and then we'll only leave one after for any kind of refinement or whatever. Mm. If, I don't know if you want to meet on the... The on the 10th. 10th. So it's possible if we yeah. need to yeah. do anything leading up Carol, to it. Mm. Have that as a spare day just in case we do need to refine something. Okay, yeah. we'll do it that way. So basically we'll just I'm just going to work on my one is meditation and the ideals workshop. So focus on that and, and have it ready for the 10th. Mm. Now, look, the other thing I was wondering was if um, those that are going to be um, doing a PowerPoint presentation, which will be... Um, yourself, Liz, um, and also Keith and myself, um, if you two could send me your PowerPoint presentations and I can just put them on my laptop so that we don't all have to bring laptops with their PowerPoint okay. presentations and then try and get different laptops talking to their system over there. Oh, yeah. Set it up on the one laptop. Yep. Because um, um, another thing I might need is the internet connection. Uh, access to the to website, like if I want to show, say, edgarcasey.org and the resources that are there. What time are you coming over? Well, I'm coming on Friday. I'm flying over on Thursday to Melbourne, and I was thinking of staying there and then driving a uh, well, bus over there on Friday morning. That was my plan. So but I can come in. We could go to the RACV sometime on Friday and just talk to their people yeah. about um, what's. I'll I'll check all that out beforehand, but if we can try and get stuff actually working okay on the Friday, so that we don't have any issues on the Saturday, I, I can use my mobile phone as my internet connection. Oh, to tether the, um, yeah. another device to it. Okay. Yeah. So I, so I don't there with I don't need their Wi-Fi or their internet. But if you like to bring laptops, bring your laptops. Yep. Yeah. Keith, we're we're renting a car in Melbourne because we're flying into Melbourne. I don't know if we can go inside your travel to the conference because we can easily give you a lift. I'll ask Greg okay. to pick you up. Uh you're gonna be in Melbourne what day? Uh, on Friday morning. Okay. I'll, maybe okay. I'll get a lift from you guys. Friday. Friday That'll be good. I'll, I'll coordinate because I have to send you uh, our flight so that you okay. know whether we can do it or not, if it's too late for you. Yeah. I've got a um, another person that's asked me um, that the, they'd like to come, but they're also wondering if they can get a lift from Melbourne. Oh, okay. The car. Or if they can share a room with someone here in Creswick, female. Um, mm. uh, we can give me give, give her my number, Russell. We're not staying at the place where we're having the conference, but not very far. And we can easily, because as I've said, Greg had uh, an EV uh, at Melbourne. If you can uh, give her my number. Do I have your number? I, I can give it to you right now. Um, You've got my email, just, obviously. Uh, just, just email it to me. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, and I can let her know to talk to you. Yes. Um, and maybe you can... Um, she... I, I think she must live in Melbourne, but um, she was just... She just felt that if she could share accommodation and share a ride, that would make it a lot easier for her to, to come to yeah. it. Let me talk to Greg. Greg is very easy. She's is very accommodating. So uh, I think we we rented a two bedroom place where he he did the booking for the flights and the accommodation and the car, uh, and so. Um, I'm pretty sure it, it's, uh, yeah, we always rent a two bedroom place wherever we go. So uh, she can she can share the room with me or I can sleep on the uh, lounge. I'm so easy like that. What, um, what town are you staying in? Uh, again, I have to go back into uh, the emails that Greg sent me because uh, he okay. did, yeah. I, I, uh, yeah, I can, I can forward it to you. But let me talk to Greg first as a respect. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Another uh, yeah, because I uh, my room is uh, for double people, but if it was a ma male, it would have been better. But unless <laughs> what can happen is I can swap with someone. Uh, say if someone else is a female, then you know they mm -hmm. both can take uh, my room, and I just swap with another a woman. Yeah. So that way, I'm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Well. Because it's uh, a big. So that's another option. Uh, Maybe thing, oh, work out with Lolita if that's going to work or not, and just get back to the group because um, I've got a, a hotel booking there. Mm. Alison has a hotel booking there. Mm. Um, uh, Marty has not. She's with her sister elsewhere in uh, Dalesford, I think. They're staying in Dalesford. Uh, yes. Another, uh, the other thing I want to is offer is to if uh, pay someone's um, registration if someone is. Can't afford it. We do have offer an, another offer to do that as well. Okay. Um, sure. And um, not only to pay for it, but also to offer half price ones okay. for those that can't afford it. But I don't know how you get that information out to people. Yeah, well, you don't want to spin it because then everybody would want oh. it. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Free. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the universe will bring the right people, though. I do yeah. believe that. You know. That's true. Yeah. But yeah, if if someone says, "Oh, I can't afford it," then you can offer. It. Mm. Yeah. Well, we've got it. Um, so that's two offers. We've got a free free yeah. conference um, um, tuition mm. because I think the ARE sometimes offers that too. Mm. Some of their programs. Mm. We're actually travelling from the airport. I think Alice is coming to the airport to pick up me and Denise. We're going to be there at twelve thirty, and um, and I, okay. I haven't heard about Beryl. I'm not sure how Beryl is travelling. I would imagine that Beryl will come down with Rodney and Anne. Okay. Yep. Because yep. there, the three of them are staying at my place. Yeah. And my son and I shifted a couch from upstairs down the stairs today, and just about killed ourselves trying to get it down. <laughs> Um, anyhow, we keep managed alive, to, Russell. Keep alive. <laughs> we managed it, but only just. Oh, it was a bit of a struggle. I don't know how we got it up there. I think we must have had more than two people getting it up there. Mm. But um, I've just got to do a lot of rearranging, and um, you know that's. I've got a lot of things to do around the house because five years ago when we ran the conference, I had my wife here preparing the house for people staying and things. I've got to do mm. all of that as well as all the preparation. Mm. And On top of everything. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uber Eats, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, I think we'll be having meals over at the conference um, at, at the RACV Resort because their meals are, are beautiful mm. and reasonably priced too. Good, good. Excellent. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, this is all uh, getting very exciting now. <laughs> so close. I'm, I'm excited. It's great. Uh, yeah. I'm going to put the, um, your link, um, Russell, on the Ed Casey Enlightenment Group. 
because there are a few Aussies in that group, I noticed. Okay, yeah, please so do. If, if we can pick one or two, then yeah. it's worth it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So will we just leave it that we're going to meet next on the... Sunday week. On the 3rd for the rehearsal? Yeah. We can still communicate backwards and forwards up till that time. Okay. Um, we'll do that then. We'll say we'll, we'll get together for the conference pre preparation one on the 3rd. Yep. Uh, and then we'll, we'll regroup after the 15th, whatever date that will be, uh, about what we go forward with. We'll see what we do mm -hmm. after that. Mm -hmm. You will send me an email too yeah. about that. Yes, definitely. Uh, yeah, we, thank yeah, you. Yeah. I don't. I I don't have to attend when you are preparing for the conference. So it's no, it's you your can, business. It's not mine. Well, you can still uh, come and listen. Um, just, yeah, if you want uh -huh. to participate on the food. Oh yeah. Well, but I'll see. I I don't know. I'm not too yeah. sure. But uh, okay. You're available. Just join. So we're if joining. It, we're meeting on the third and the tenth, right? Mm hmm. Yes, well, I yeah. think probably the tenth. We may want to do that. I think so. I yeah. think I may want to. Yeah. The, the, the main one will be the third. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. You all, you always learn something, and you can share mm -hmm. it. If you're gonna have more conferences here in Sweden, ah, oh, well, they did that, that in in mm -hmm. in Australia. Maybe we can do that too. So it's it's always mm -hmm. a good thing um, to do. Well, we're already... No knowledge uh, is wasted. Putting, no, no. Putting out the idea that um, we might do another conference, um, not next year, but maybe the year after, mm -hmm. um, but earlier in the year, maybe March, mm -hmm. um, based around uh, finding your life's purpose. Yeah. Might be something that we could look at. Well, just see what feedback we get from this conference. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's... But you are also, but you are also getting very encouraged and, and enthusiastic when you have had a conference like this, and you have so many ideas. Oh, we can do this mm -hmm. and we can do that, <laughs> but we have to come down here in Sweden now because we are closing down the the foundation. So that's the main. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that, that that that's the main problem that we have. We have to close down, so. That, that's the most important thing to do at the moment. And then after the new year, we will see how we're continuing working with the Casimir work here in Sweden. So it's... Yeah, because I think Sweden, uh, I think the group's not aware that the Sweden had uh, difficulties with the law or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was costing yeah, them yeah. a lot of money or something. Uh, so they just oh, yeah, that to was... close down yeah. the organization. Yeah, yeah. And just start as a restart as a just a get together mm -hmm. let the foundation go yeah um, oh well so that that's why um the swedish ARE group is on our prayer list at the moment mm -hmm. to help support mm -hmm. you during this transition period. oh yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah we really feel it so it's it's it feels good to have uh people all around the world thinking about us and giving yeah. us this support. Mm. Yeah, we're all in this together. Mm. Because oh, yeah. we're all one. We really are oh, all. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. yeah. I, I just see it as a cleansing. Mm. As a cleansing. Yeah. And, and exactly, exactly, yes. Because we have been going on in this uh, in this behavior, in this matter for, for 30 mm. years and you have to restart, you have to do new things and you have to do it simpler and so on. And I think it's, and that kind of old energy is, mm. you know, it's still there, but we have to put in some new energies mm. in the case of work mm. here mm. As, as well. So mm. you can't stay I, I, in that mm. 90s. I always see it as a, like a renovation. It gets oh, noisy yeah. and messy, but mm. a new building, a new fresh mm. building will come up out of it oh yes 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 and we all agree that all the the board members are just we are one thought in that uh, at, at, at that topic so it's it's um we all agree about that so it's mm. it's uh, 
it feels good it feels good too mm. but uh, mm. but the problem the problem is that we have a chairman and he has had some because of all this work because everything is on him and he he has the contact with all the authorities and so on so he's in in charge of everything and he unfortunately he has had some um physical um issues as well because of this it's a, it, i think it's stress related but um, yeah. he will <gasps> yeah. uh, i think i saw the signs is that oof Yes, yeah. Yeah, I saw the physical signs. It wasn't good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the now kid. he he is he's been at the hospital, so they are taking care of him and so on. So he's on treatment. So I think he will really, he I think he will recover. But it would take time. It would take the time he needs to to recover. And um, I think we should be putting Ulf's name on the prayer mm-hmm. list as well then. Well, yes, if you like, yes, yes. Yeah, we, we will be grateful. Mm. Mm. I think because uh, when you attach yourself to the work so much that when it oh yeah yeah closes yeah. down breaks down you sort of you you mm. go down mm. with it as well and I think that's the science mm. of him. So he mm. needs to detach himself from it and be separate. Mm. And yep. Yeah. But we are we are trying to support him as much as we can, but mm-hmm. um, and so on and uh, so. But I think he will recover. I think he uh, he has ideas and and mm-hmm. and uh, how to continue mm-hmm. working as well. So. Mm. Gotta be careful not to over. To do it and to look after yeah, them. Yeah, that's yeah. 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 It's been too much work for him. Mm. Way too much work. Mm. Yeah. As we serve, we are also being taught about a lot of things about balance. Mm. Been there, mm. done that. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. Been there, done mm. that. Uh, mm. My favorite word, balance. It's a good one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. My favorite too, being a liberal. Life mm. is all about balance. <laughs> mm, mm. Right. Cool. Easier said than done. You can just say the oh, word. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Doing it. Yeah. I think when when your back is against the wall and you hit rock bottom, you 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 really have to make a decision whether you will change, or or, or you can keep on not listening, at your own mm. peril, mind you. Heeding <laughs> mm, mm, mm. it, yeah. Okay. Um I think it's just <laughs> almost nine o'clock. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. Um this has been great. Yeah. Um, and well, we'll just have to work out after the conference what we'll start with, whether it will be Rye Red's book or maybe Mini Mansions or something like that, that we can start looking at something a bit different other than meditation. Mm-hmm. Master meditators. Maybe <laughs> on our first meeting, if we, when we do come back, we can uh, talk about that. We, you know, if people want to give any feedback on their meditation, that would be a nice thing as well. Mm. Yeah. Yep. All right. Okay. Well, thank you all. This has been a wonderful journey. Yep. All these, mm-hmm. what's that? Something like 23 weeks we've been looking wow. at this now. That's a lot. Oh, yeah. A lot. Oh. Long journey. <laughs> but it's only the beginning. It's only the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, everyone, for all the work that you've done. I learned so much. Oh, thank yes. you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it's a group. It's a group journey group mm. practice mm. Uh, we're all supporting mm. one another through this mm. i'm just and I can, I can, uh, I can i say uh, can i say something at the conference uh ulf was surprising me on uh, saturday morning eva would you like to make the have the guy the, the meditation and I wasn't prepared for it. So, okay. Uh, wow. Ah, 
<laughs> I never forget it. So I was I was prepared for it. So okay, <laughs> I'll do my best. That's what I can do. So <laughs> hmm? that was a surprise for me. So I I used quite a lot of those. Um, it was just for fifteen minutes or so. So it wasn't that long. But um, we did I had a neck exercise and the breathing exercise and so on. And oh, we started it up. So like that. So it was. A, pre, uh, a very exciting experience, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, I'm, glad, oh, yeah. I'm glad that uh, Ulf put you on the spot and you responded. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, think he, I think he knew what he was doing. Okay. And, uh, yeah. uh, well, mm. Um, the, the uh, first maybe I needed, I, I needed that kick. Maybe yeah, I needed yes. that kick. Yeah. Need a little push. Yeah. You're the perfect person. You're the perfect person to do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I have to practice some more. But it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Thanks for sharing it with you. <clears throat> Thank you for joining in, Eva. Um, mm -hmm. It's been wonderful sharing it with all of you. It's mm -hmm. just been... Mm -hmm. um, and look forward to future sharings in whatever we um, course we decide to take after the conference. Oh, yeah. There's a life after the conference, too. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Is it possible, to uh, Russell, to say a, a closing prayer of gratitude for this past few weeks that we've been through mm -hmm. together? Mm -hmm. um, you're volunteering to do that? No, no, you are. I'm volunteering. Oh, <laughs> Thank you for following <laughs> me. <laughs> okay, I, I can close it down with a, a prayer. Okay, just close our eyes and just focus on our inner being, who we really are, our individuality, our soul self, the part of us connected to Christ and to God. And Father, Mother, God, Christ Jesus, we are very grateful as individuals and as a group for the guidance, the support, the love, the understanding, the wisdom that we've all shared through these past 23 sessions of looking at meditation from a, an Edgar Cayce perspective and from a perspective from Eastern sources and other Western mysticism sources. And each of us is grateful for the opportunity of gaining something that worked for us, that will be part of who we become as we apply what we've learned. And we're just so grateful for the support of each other, for the love we share, and for the enthusiasm that after 23 weeks we still <laughs> engender each time we get together. And the fact that we can get together and have a bit of fun with this, to actually enjoy it. It's not something all that necessarily serious. It's something we can enjoy as a group. And we give thanks for all these opportunities that you give us for us to learn and grow and be of service to others. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Russell. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Happy, happy, Have a good happy restaurant opening. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, can you please put my my family's restaurant in your prayers that it will actually serve the people that we employ and the people that we serve. Thank you. Okay. Can you send us the name of the restaurant? Okay, uh, I will send me the name and we can put it on our prayer list. Thank you so much. Because it will need a little bit of support as it starts up. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, bye. 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 Good luck Bye. with the conference. Thank Good you. luck with Bye. your life. Bye.